Hello and welcome to HUD's training on the computer matching agreement and the data sharing agreements for community development block grant disaster recovery and community development block grant mitigation grantees. My name is Bonnie Newcomb and I'm a CPD specialist in the disaster recovery and special issues division here at HUD. In this training, I'm going to walk you through both agreements and try to highlight some of the sections of the agreements where grantees may have the most questions. The first half of the training will cover the computer matching agreement and the second half will cover the data share agreement. So this training is really trying to explain to grantees how the long standing data sharing agreement between FEMA with HUD and CDBG grantees has been revised to address privacy related issues identified in the applicable FEMA systems of records notices. HUD worked with FEMA on a computer matching agreement to ensure that HUD grantees will get the latest individual assistance program data from FEMA in order to build out their impact and unmet needs assessment market their programs to potentially impacted individuals and complete their duplication of benefits analysis for HUD individuals benefits. This webinar explains the new process grantees will use to make data requests through HUD, including signing a CMA and data sharing agreement with HUD. The computer matching agreement is the first agreement we will go over. This agreement establishes a computer matching program between HUD and the grantee to support the duplication of benefit checks conducted by the grantee for CDBG DR grant funded programs. The training objectives for this agreement are for grantees to understand the overall purpose of the computer matching agreement and the authorized use of the data obtained under the agreement. We will also cover the approval process for the CMA, including the required publication of the agreement, the applicability date of the agreement, and the renewal process for extending the term of the agreement if necessary. We will explain the process for requesting the FEMA data and provide an overview of the requirements related to the use and protection of the data. The CMA addresses essential data sharing between HUD and the grantee by governing, governing the use of the shared data to prevent the duplication of benefits in the administration of grantee CDBG DR and CDBG mitigation grant awards. In order to be able to share this data with grantees, HUD has entered into an agreement with FEMA to obtain data from FEMA on data on applicants registering for FEMA individual and household programs to share with grantees for the program of preventing the duplication of benefits. The CMA will help to expedite program implementation by making FEMA data grantees need to perform duplicate of benefit checks available quicker, which will allow grantees to move forward with providing assistance for CDBG DR grant funded programs. This will help expedite recovery for applicants, reduce duplication of benefits, and allow grantees to determine benefits upon application because the grantee will have the FEMA assistance amounts immediately available. So once HUD and the grantee have signed, have a signed an effective agreement, the process of requesting and receiving FEMA data should be much faster and easier for grantees. The CMA authorizes a very specific use for the data of determining individual benefit amounts for approved activities under the grantees approved CDBG DR action plan for any open grant. Grantees will use the data provided by HUD to conduct computer matching of the data to ensure that CDBG DR assistance provided to the grantee is not duplicative of FEMA assistance received by the grantee program applicant. For each grantee program applicant, the grantee will use the amount of FEMA assistance received by that grantee program applicant to calculate the grantee's program applicant's unmet need and calculate a maximum award amount that will prevent the duplication of benefits. The CMA clearly outlines the prohibited uses of the data provided by HUD under the agreement. The agreement states that grantees are prohibited from using or sharing information under this agreement concerning individuals who are neither applicants nor 
nor recipients of assistance under the grantees specific approved programs for any purpose. Also, information concerning non-matching individuals will not be used or disclosed by either agency party for any purpose outside of the agreement. The grantee will not use the data derivatively or disclose the data internally or externally except for the uses as provided in the agreement without written consent of HUD and consistent with all applicable legal requirements and policies. As for any records of data received under the CMA, records obtained for or created pursuant to the matching agreement will not be disclosed outside of the grantee unless permissible by require or required by law or this agreement. The grantee must obtain the permission of HUD before making any disclosure unless disclosure is required by law. If disclosing these records to any entity, including a government contractor, to accomplish identif identification of duplication of benefits, the grantee will obtain written agreement of that entity to abide by the terms of the CMA and, if necessary, enter a, enter a, into a separate computer matching agreement. Any data or information exchange cannot be duplicated unless essential to the conduct of the matching described in the agreement. So the process by which grantees get an approved, signed, and valid computer matching agreement with HUD starts with the grantee signing the agreement and submitting the signed agreement to HUD. All CMAs must be published in the Federal Register and allow for a 30-day public comment period. HUD will batch the CMAs they receive from the grantees and publish a summarized form of the agreement in the Federal Register every 45 days. Any agreements received within the first 45 days will be batched together in the first publication. HUD must allow for a 30-day public comment period and address any comments received. If there are significant changes needed to the notice based on the public comments received, HUD will publish a revised notice and provide an additional 30-day public comment and review period. These agreements will take effect 30 days from the date that the final agreement is published in the Federal Register Notice. HUD will continue to collect, batch, and publish agreements every 45 days until all agreements have been summarized in the Federal Register Notice. The CMA is valid for 18 months and is effective once the agreement is published in the Federal Register Notice and the 30 days for public comment has passed. If a grantee needs to extend that 18 months, grantees can request and receive one 12 month period extension on their CMA upon mutual agreement by the grantee and HUD. To request an extension, the grantee would first send an email to the grant manager or CPD representative requesting the extension. The request and renewal must occur three months prior to the expiration date of the initial agreement to allow for time to process the request. All renewals for computer matching agreements are subject to the requirements of the Privacy Act including certification by the grantee and HUD that the matching program will be conducted without change and conducted in compliance with the original agreement. The computer matching agreement is valid for 18 months and the agreement will terminate after 18 months from the effective date or when the purpose of the computer match has been accomplished, whichever comes first. If an extension has been requested and granted, the agreement will terminate at the end of the 12 month extension. The agreement may also be terminated, nullified, or voided by either the grantee or HUD if either party violates the terms of the agreement or the grantee or the authorized user's misuse or improperly handle the data provided by HUD. The agreement will also be terminated, nullified, or voided if the grantee and HUD mutually agree to terminate the agreement prior to the expiration date or either party provides the other with 30 days written notice. And lastly, if HUD if the HUD-FEMA computer matching agreement, which allows HUD to request data from FEMA is terminated, the computer matching agreement would also be terminated. A grantee could submit their request for FEMA data at the same time they submit their signed CMA. Any data that is requested and covered under the CMA will be required to wait for the 30-day public comment period to be satisfied before the data can be released to the grantee's authorized users. It is important to note that if HUD receives public comments on a published, ma published matching notice, HUD shall receive the, review the comments to determine whether any changes to the matching notice are necessary. If HUD determines that significant changes to the matching notice are necessary, 
HUD shall publish a revised matching notice and provide an additional 30 day public comment, comment and review period. The CMA takes effect from the date of the final agreement summary is published in the Federal Register notice. So the first step in requesting the data is the grantee will email the data request to the grant manager and the disaster recovery at HUD.gov email address. The grantee will attach the completed data request template to the email and the grant manager will then review the template to verify the correct information. And then the grant manager will take the request to the assistant regional, the regional assistant director, who will then review the request for completeness and send it to HUD's policy and research development disaster lead, who will make the request to FEMA for the data. Once FEMA provides the requested data, HUD will then make the data available to the grantee through a password protected email to the grantee's authorized user. So in describing the process for how and when a grantee requests the FEMA data from HUD, I stated that when FEMA data is available, it will be made available to the grantee's authorized user. Authorized users are employees, agents, including contractor subcontractors, or subrecipients, including an agent or employee of its subrecipients, who have entered into an agreement with the grantee to comply with all requirements on the use of the data contained in the CMA and acknowledge that under the Privacy Act, unlawful disclosure of PII data is a misdemeanor and a subject of a fine of up to $5,000. Authorized users must also sign an enforceable agreement with the grantee that states when given access to the HUD database or file, the authorized user will not use or reveal any individually identifiable information furnished, acquired, retrieved, or assembled by the authorized user or any other purpose other than the purposes in paragraph 1A and B of the data sharing agreement. They will not make any disclosure or publication whereby an individual or household could be identified or the data furnished by or related to any particular person could be identified or permit anyone other than the grantees authorized users to access the data. Additionally, a grantee will not authorize more than the number of authorized users of data that the grantee determines is necessary to accomplish the purposes outlined in the CMA. HUD may periodically request the grantee update its list of authorized users and revoke access to individuals that are not identified as authorized users. HUD will prohibit data access to data on its systems by any individual that is not identified by the grantee as an authorized user. The CMA requires grantees to independently verify the information produced by a matching program and provide the individual an opportunity to contest the agency's findings before an adverse action is taken against the individual because of the match. The grantee may not deny, terminate, or make a final decision on any CDBG DR assistance to an individual or take other adverse action against such individual as a result of the information produced by its matching, matching program until an officer or employee of the grantee has independently verified such information and the individual has had the opportunity of no less than 30 days from the date of the notice to contest the grantee's findings. When required by the Privacy Act, an independent verification requires investigation and confirmation of specific information relating to an individual that is used as the basis for an adverse action against the individual. The amount of asset or income involved, one is the first one. The second one is whether such individual actually has or had access to such access, um, asset or income for such an, for an individual's own use. And three, the period or periods when the individual actually had the asset or the income. So the grantee must comply with its procedures for verifying the match FEMA data and for allowing individuals to contest benefit determinations. Grantees have the responsibility to prevent the duplication of benefits in the use of their CDBG DR grants. To comply with the Stafford Act and the Appropriation Acts, grantees must prevent the duplication of benefits and must have adequate policies and procedures for this purpose. 
If a grantee confirms that an individual is receiving benefits through FEMA assistance programs, the grantee has the responsibility to prevent the duplication of benefits. So if a grantee discovers that an individual is found to be receiving benefits through HUD CDBG DR grants in addition to receiving benefits through FEMA's assistance programs, the CDBG DR grantee will be responsible for addressing the duplication of benefits non-compliance. We also wanted to point out a few other additional requirements that are important in the CMA. First, the record retention requirements. So grantees will retain FEMA data received from HUD under the CMA only for the application processing times required for the grantee to verify data, which for CDBG DR grantees, this processing time will be until grant closeout. Any FEMA data that is obtained under the CMA, which is not used by the CDBGR DR grantee, must be deleted after the application processing is completed. There is an exception that applies if the information is required for evidentiary reasons, in which case the information will be destroyed upon completion of the criminal, civil, or administrative actions and cases. To ensure data security safeguards are in place, grantees must comply with the existing and future requirements set forth by the Privacy Act. All related OMB circulars and memora memorandums such as Circular A-130, NIST standards, and the federal acquisition, acquisition regulations, including any applicable amendments published after the effective date of their CMA. These laws, dir directives, and regulations include requirements for safeguarding federal information systems and PII used in federal agency business processes, as well as related reported requirements. Grantees are responsible for all individuals who have access to data and must restrict access to the data to only authorized users, confirm their authorized users receive training to ensure proper information security and privacy protections are adhered to in a manner consistent with the agreement, advise anyone with access to the data of the confidential nature of the data and the safeguards required to protect the data, and notify authorized users of the civil and criminal sanctions for noncompliance contained in the federal, in the applicable federal laws. Grantees must employ appropriate technical, physical, and administrative safeguards to secure all FEMA applicant PII shared under the computer matching agreement, whether in physical or electronic form, only in places and in a manner that is safe from access from unauthorized persons or for unauthorized use. Technical security measures ensure the security of the data and require that grantees um, comply with applicable laws, including but not limited to FISMA and associated NIST standards. Ensure that cloud-based systems that store, analyze, process, or use FEMA PII has authority to operate, approved by the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. Ensure that every IT system that stores, analyzes, processes, or uses the FEMA PII, regardless of configuration or location, undergoes routine security cybersecurity scans and has a valid ATO, limits access to applicant PII provided by HUD only to grantees authorized users who are administering disaster assistance to applicants on behalf of HUD, and understands the personal and confidential nature of the applicant PII and agrees that they will comply with all applicable laws, regulations, policies, and provisions of the agreement to protect the confidentiality of the applicant PII. Grantees must report and track incidents in accordance with the most current final version of NISP special publication 800-61. If a suspected or confirmed breach involving PII incident is discovered, the grantee must promptly notify the HUD National Help Desk by calling 888-297-8689. If the grantee is unable to speak with HUD's system security contacts within one hour of the incident, or if contacting the system security contact is not practical, then the grantee must call the HUD help desk at 202-708-3700. The grantee will also be responsible for following its external 
internal established procedures, including notifying the proper organizations, such as the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, the ISSOs, and any other reporting contacts listed in the CMA, conducting a breach and risk analysis, and determining the need for notice and or re remediation to individuals affected by the loss, and for providing notice and credit monitoring to the affected individuals at no cost to HUD if the analysis indicates that individual notice and credit monitoring are appropriate. Okay, so we covered the computer matching agreement, its purpose, authorized uses, processes for requesting data, and the requirements to safeguard the data. Now we'll go over a data sharing agreement. So for the data sharing agreement, we will review the overall purpose of the agreement and the authorized use of the data covered under the data sharing agreement. We will discuss the effective date of the agreement, how long the agreement is effective for, and the process for the termination of the agreement. We're also going to review the grantee's responsibilities as outlined in the data sharing agreement to include the use and maintenance of the data, identify the authorized users covered in the agreement, and the authorized users access requirements. And we'll talk about accessing, storing, and protecting the data covered under the DSA. And lastly, we will review complying with privacy incident handling requirements. The purpose of the data sharing agreement is to enable HUD to share with the grantee the data it receives from FEMA, including personally identifiable information that is protected by the Privacy Act of 1974 for two specific purposes. First, to assess unmet needs resulting from major disasters for which a grantee receives a community development block grant disaster recovery allocation and to plan for the use of the grant. This can include funds for electric power systems, mitigation or resilience purposes allocated or awarded as CDBGR, CDBG mitigation, or CDBG NDR grants. And the second purpose for the use of the data is to market activities to potential applicants that may be eligible for assistance funded by the grants. Unlike the computer matching agreement, which, which we covered in the first part of this training, the data obtained under the data sharing agreement cannot be used for checking for duplication of benefits or for determining eligibility of an individual. The data sharing agreement is affected, effective after both the grantee and HUD sign the agreement, and it remains in effect until closeout of the last grant for which a grantee receives data under the data sharing agreement. Either HUD or the grantee can terminate the agreement earlier than the grant closeout date by providing written notice to the other party. However, termination of the agreement does not absolve the grantee from any responsibilities outlined in the data sharing agreement unless the grantee has returned the data to HUD or destroyed the data. So section 13 of the data sharing agreement goes into further detail on the responsibilities of the grantee. So I would encourage grantees to read the details in that section of the agreement as well. In signing the data sharing agreement, the grantee is agreeing to the responsibilities of using and maintaining the data it receives under the agreement only for assessing the unmet needs of the approved disasters and to plan for the use of one or more CDBG DR grants, including funds for mitigation or resilient purposes awarded as CDBG mitigation or CDBG NDR grants and to market activities to potential applicants that may be eligible for assistance funded by the grants. In addition to his agreeing to the use of the data, the agreement also outlines the requirements for the access of the data by the grantee's authorized users. All authorized users must be identified by the grantee to HUD. Authorized users are employees, agents, including contractors sub or subcontractors, or subrecipients, including an agent or employee of its subrecipients, who have entered into an agreement with the grantee to comply with all requirements of the use of data contained in the data sharing agreement, and acknowledge that under the Privacy Act, unlawful disclosure of PII data is a misdemeanor and subject to the fine of up to $5,000. Grantees should authorize only the number of authorized users of data that the grantee determines is necessary to accomplish the purposes outlined in the data sharing agreement. To ensure the grantee is maintaining their control of authorized users, 
HUD may periodically request that the grantee update its list of authorized users, and HUD may revoke access to individuals that are not identified as authorized users. And HUD can and will prohibit data access to data on its systems by any individual that is not identified the grant, uh, by the grantee as an authorized user. Authorized users identified by the grantee must sign an enforceable agreement with the grantee that states when given access to the database or file which contains the data covered under the DSA, they will not use or reveal any individually identifiable information furnished, acquired, retrieved, or assembled by the authorized users or others for any purpose other than those stated in the data sharing agreement. They will not make or disclose uh, make any disclosure or publication of an individual or household which could be identified or the data furnished by or related to any particular person could be identified or permit any one other than the grantees authorized users to access the data. Grantees and their authorized users have the responsibility of protecting and securing the data they receive under the data sharing agreement. Grantees must establish minimum standards to ensure that this protection is established and implemented. Grantees are responsible to ensure that they encrypt and store the applicant PII that is protected by the Privacy Act, whether in physical or electronic form, in a secure manner consistent with this type of data and only in places and in a manner that is safe from access by unauthorized persons or for unauthorized use. At a minimum, access to the data maintained in a computer memory must be controlled by password protection, and all printouts and other physical products containing PII deprive, derived from the data must be locked in cabinets, file drawers, or other secure locations when not in use. Grantees must take reasonable precautions to ensure that only authorized users have access to PII data and that PII data is encrypted prior to allowing authorized users access and authorized users only access PI data with an officially sanctioned application for the purpose described in the data sharing agreement. Grantees must also instruct all authorized users regarding the confidential nature of the information and the requirements of the agreement, the criminal penalties and civil remedies specified in federal, state, and local laws against unauthorized disclosure of PII data covered in the data sharing agreements and require all authorized users to take any mandatory training offered by HUD regarding proper information security and privacy protections. Grantees must also employ appropriate technical, physical, and administrative safeguards to secure any and all PII shared under the provisions of the data sharing agreement, whether in physical or electronic form. PII is only permitted to be used in places and in a manner that is safe from access by unauthorized persons or for unauthorized use. Grantees must prevent disclosure of PII provided under the data sharing agreement to any person or entity that is not an authorized user. Um, and continuing with the requirements for the protection and security of the data received under the data sharing agreement, grantees must also edit all printouts, tabulations, and reports to ensure that they do not contain unauthorized disclosure of data provided under the data sharing agreement. Grantees must also destroy the data provided under the data sharing agreement for any major disasters at the time of the closeout of the grant that assists the major disaster for which the data was provided, and then notify HUD when the data provided under that agreement is destroyed. Where record keeping periods extend beyond grant closeout, the grantee shall retain records of decisions based on the use of the data for record keeping periods required by the grants. Grantees must also submit to monitoring or inspection by HUD. The data sharing agreement gives HUD and FEMA the right to make unannounced and unscheduled inspections of any location in which the grantee or its authorized users use data, including any associated computer center, to evaluate compliance with the terms of the agreement and the requirements of the Privacy Act of 1974. And lastly, the grantee must establish and implement policies and procedures to comply with the requirements of the data sharing agreement. All grantees must comply with privacy incident requirements as outlined in the data sharing agreement. 
a privacy incident occurs when there's a loss of control, compromise, unauthorized disclosure or exposure, unauthorized acquisition, unauthorized access, or failure to secure PII in readable form, whether physical, electronic, or when authorized user access applicant PII for an unauthorized purpose. In the event of a breach of the data sharing agreement or any exposure, unauthorized release or misuse of PII shared under the provisions of the data sharing agreement, the grantee will immediately report the incident to the HUD privacy officer. HUD will investigate the incident and will consult with the grantee and FEMA to diagnose, mitigate, and manage the privacy incident until its conclusion. The grantee shall be responsible for cooperating with HUD and may be responsible for carrying out the necessary measures to remedy the effect of the privacy incident, including notification unless mutually agreed upon otherwise, and may be responsible for bearing any costs associated with such measures. So this concludes the over overview of the computer matching agreement and the data sharing agreements. In this webinar, we have tried to walk you through each of the agreements and highlight some of the details you will find when you read through the agreements yourself. We have also put together an FAQ for both of these agreements, and the FAQ will provide questions and answers, which we hope will provide even more clarity on these agreements. On this last slide, we have provided resources to further help grantees to understand the two agreements, and you will find links to HUD's privacy website and a link to the Privacy Act itself. The last link on this slide will take you to HUD.gov where you'll find the FAQs, the data request templates, um, the um, agreements themselves, and other resources related to the data sharing agreement and computer matching agreements. Thank you for reviewing this webinar and please reach out to your grant manager or your CP re CPD representative if you have any additional questions on these two agreements. You can also um, email the policy unit at drsipolicyunit at hud.gov with any of your questions as well. This concludes our training on the computer matching agreement and the data sharing agreement.